Hi, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at this mechanic C211 soldering station and this one came up in my search for soldering stations with a JBC style uh, cartridge holder. So this one uh, has a T210 handle with it although it will actually work with the T115 handle as well. Unfortunately I couldn't find a version of this with the T245 handle which would be my preferred one because of the higher power rating uh, but the 210 should do most soldering jobs and this one looked quite promising it's a decent price point it's coming in at about £100 delivered on AliExpress and I'll put a link to that in the description down below but this one seemed to have you know really quite a decent build quality it seems to have a proper transformer in it based on the weight of the unit uh, so it looked like potentially quite an attractive proposition. PCBWay are our sponsor for today's video where you can get your PCBs manufactured at really attractive prices. Just upload your Gerber files by clicking the quick order PCB and it will bring up all the details for the PCB, allow you to check it over and allow you to select the various options that are available for the low cost PCBs. You can also get parts CNC machined, sheet metal cut and folded and also you can get parts 3D printed and more recently PCBWay have also added a hardware store where you can buy things like multimeters and tools and other hand tools and that kind of stuff that you might want to use for your prototype project. So don't forget to visit pcbway.com. So looking at what you get in the box, you get the control unit, you also get a T210 handpiece, you get two C210 cartridges, a blade type one and a fine conical point one, and then you get a little holder with some brass wool in it. So no integrated sponge or brass wool onto the station. It's a little standalone unit. So quickly looking at the tip cleaner. I think this is the weakest part of this package. It's very cheap. It's not weighted in any way. So I think if you're cleaning your tip, this has a tendency to wander off on the bench. Um, the hole isn't quite circular. It's a little bit dented around here. And also the paint's still a little bit tacky, even though I've had this for a couple of months. Uh, but to clean it, uh, you basically just pull the bottom off and you can throw away the bits of solder that will have accumulated in the bottom. Uh, now the brass wool, I don't actually think is brass wool. I think it's some kind of copper coated steel wool or something like that. It hasn't quite got the right colour for brass. This is the one that I normally use. And you can see this is genuine brass wool. I think I got this from RS in the UK. It's got a very different appearance to this very bright, um, almost copper coloured uh, wool. So this one definitely doesn't do any damage to your tips but the risk with this is it's a little bit stiffer and it might scratch away the plating on the tips. And then we have the handpiece and this is actually a really nice piece of kit. It's probably better than the genuine JBC actually. It's really nicely made. We've got a really nice cable and a decent uh, strain relief but this um, area here where you put your fingers is made from a really nice silicone material. It feels very very comfortable and the machining and everything all looks really nice quality. It's got a real nice shine to this. You compare it with the genuine JBC, which is a little bit duller. Obviously, this is the 245 handpiece. But uh, in my opinion, this one actually feels a lot more comfortable to hold and feels slightly better built than the genuine JBC. It comes with some uh, silicone cable to the DIN connector on the end. And this is uh, the same connector that you tend to see on all of these Chinese stations. It's not the same as the genuine um, connector that would be on a JBC system, but I think all of these handpieces are generally interchangeable on the Chinese stations. But yeah, the handpiece seems to be very nice quality. And then we've got the control unit, and the first thing that stands out with this, other than the awful colours, is actually this is really, really nicely made. Uh, all of the seam lines are really nice and tight. It feels like it's built like a brick. Really, really good quality. Um, and you can see the quality of the moulding all looks really good. So um, build quality definitely right up there uh, with a genuine JVC system. On the back of the unit we've got an IEC connector, fuse and a mains power switch. Uh, and then we've got the connector that goes off to the handpiece. We've got a USB port. Now it did actually come with a USB cable uh, but no indication of how you can use this with a PC. I had a look on the website and it doesn't have any software on there. I assume this is probably for any future firmware updates, but whether they do any of that, you'll never know. Um, we've got a 4mm banana jack for connecting to your ESD mat, and I think this is tied to the earth pin on here. And the indication that we've got a proper transformer in here, this is, one is for 220 volts. There is a 115 volt version available, but it's a completely separate item. 
Uh, we'll, when we open it up, we'll see if you can reconfigure it for 115 volts, but I doubt it. Then on this side, we've got a cradle for holding the handpiece. And if you prefer it on the other side, you can just undo this screw and mount it on here. And as you can see, uh, it allows you to alter the height, but uh, once it's screwed in, it rests on these ribs, which means that it's not going to slide around. So that's good. And then on the front of the unit, we've got a full color TFT display for the user interface. And we'll look at that later on in the video. We've got three presets so you can quickly access three different temperatures, but you can obviously go up and down with the up and down arrows. And then we've got a menu slash OK button to change some of the settings. So overall, the control unit seems to be uh, pretty decent. So what we're going to do now is open it up and have a look inside. Okay, so here's the unit separated out into its three main parts. And the first thing that strikes me, I haven't looked at it properly yet, but the build quality and the design seems to be really, really good. I'm quite impressed. They must have had their best designers on the case here. We'll look a bit more in detail in a moment. Uh, but yeah, I'm quite impressed already just taking it apart. The only thing that I've noticed is possibly a mistake during assembly. So um, on this side, as I mentioned, we've got the cradle for the handpiece. And when you put the handpiece into the cradle, it detects that and puts the system into uh, like a sleep mode. But uh, we've got a connector that goes off to the main PCB so that it can detect when the collar of the soldier 9 touches this metal part. But what they've done is they've connected both terminals from this connector onto this right hand side. So if you move this over to the other side, it wouldn't actually be able to detect it. And this doesn't make any sense to have both of these connected to the same metal part. It's not like it's bridging a contact when you put the handpiece in there. So I can only assume this was intended to connect to uh, one of the screws on this side so that it can detect both sides. So possibly an error in the assembly there. Here's the front panel PCB and they've gone for a fancy matte black PCB with an Enig plating. Uh, so all of these markings are on the copper layer and they look really nice in that gold, even though no one's really ever going to get to see this. But it does show they put a bit of thought into the design there. Um, the main uh, PCB just in the uh, control unit near the transformer. I think that's got all the rectifier circuitry. I'm not sure if it's got any regulation on there as well. We'll look at that in a minute. But the, the DC seems to come into this red connector here. And then this connector goes off to the back panel, uh, which has the connections for the heater. And then there's another connector here, which I think has the thermocouple connection as well as an RX and a TX for the USB. So I think there must be a USB to UART converter on the back PCB as well. But uh, yeah, everything looks really nicely designed, actually. I think the only sketchy part on here really is just the hand soldering is a little bit poor quality, but everything's really nice and intact. There's no chance that this is going to fail, so you can't really complain too much there. Uh, so we've got the DC coming in, and then it goes to a DC to DC converter just over here. There's also a linear regulator right next to this STM32 clone. This is a Notion branded microcontroller. Uh, and we've got a couple of R's and C's here for the six buttons on the front here to do a little bit of debouncing, although they'll still have to do some so software debouncing as well. We've got the RX and TX onto the UART on here for programming. Uh, I don't think anything will come out on there in normal use. We've got a buzzer. Uh, we've got a bit of electronics associated with the backlight for the LCD. We have a, um, a current sense chip here. Now, rather than just using a sense resistor and a amplifier for some reason they've gone with this one where it's basically got a just a shunt that goes from one pin to the other and then there's like a hall effect magnetic sensor here which is detecting the amount of current going through that point so i guess that means they don't have to um, have it on a different supply or they don't have to worry about whether it's on the high or the low side it's just an interesting choice uh, a slightly more expensive part than probably just a normal amplifier and a shunt resistor uh, we've got a low noise amplifier here, so that's for the thermocouple and a bit of electronics just to drive this MOSFET. So fairly straightforward in design, but uh, it all looks really quite nice and tidy and uh, a few li nice little touches. They've also got these interesting mounts. Uh, so rather than just have the bosses coming off the front of the unit at 90 degrees to it, it's going in at an angle and then they've made these little plastic things that hold the PCB at the right angle. So again, just a little bit of attention to detail there in the design of the main board. So here's the main part of the unit and we'll take it apart a little bit further than this, but quite innovative construction method. You can see they've got a PCB mounted directly to the transformer. There's also another one at the bottom here. 
Um, we've got the bridge rectifier here, but there appears to be some more electronics, so we'll have to have a closer look at that in a moment to see what this is all doing. Uh, but we've got an indication of the rating of the unit. Now, I think on the uh, ad, it says this unit's rated for 80 watt continuous and 130 watts peak, but as far as I'm aware, these C C210 cartridges, you can't even get 50 or 60 watts into them. They're rated lower than that. So uh, unless there's something, uh, these are particularly low impedance, the ones that come with it, certainly the JVC ones can't deliver 90 watts anyway. But uh, 20 volts AC input, just a fixed 230 volts input. So it doesn't look like we can reconfigure this for 110 volts. But the blue wires are the 20 volt AC winding and they come out from the transformer straight onto the PCB and then off to the rectifier. Here's the power supply block, which is quite novel in construction. I've never seen anything like this in any other piece of equipment. Uh, but we've got the transformer wired to each of these two PCBs and then the mounting screws go through the top PCB, through the transformer, through the bottom PCB and then get held into the bottom part of the chassis. So quite a decent design. The stuff on the top is the secondary winding 20 volts AC and the bottom with the red windings is the mains input and there's the mains connector just here with live neutral and earth and then we've got a mains fuse we've got an NTC for inrush limiting of this transformer we've got a filter capacitor common mode choke and then some wire capacitors between each of the poles and earth so they've got all the filtering there we've got some slots to um, increase the uh, creepage distance so that all looks to be quite nicely designed quite a novel construction as I said and then on the top side um, now I don't fully understand the design here because the we've only got one secondary winding coming off onto these two wires here but we've got two full wave rectifiers and the outputs are tied together there's two capacitors uh, one for this bridge rectifier and one for this bridge rectifier so I don't know why they've done that uh, possibly to try and increase the current rating but as you know with semiconductors if you parallel them up you don't necessarily get an even distribution of um, power between those two devices so I'm not sure why they've done that. Now unfortunately they've lasered off all of the markings, let me zoom in a little bit, uh, they've lasered off all the markings on here. This looks like it could be a synchronous book converter so I guess with the 20 volt AC I'm not sure if this is being stepped down to 12 volts. The capacitors don't give an indication. I think they're all rated for 35 volts. But there's a big inductor here and a couple of MOSFETs from what I can tell. So I'm guessing this must be a buck converter given as a regulated output here. But uh, we'll turn it on in a moment and we'll measure the output voltage from here. Because I would have assumed that it was just using the rectified uh, waveform from the transformer directly to drive the heater rather than trying to regulate it but uh, we'll do a measurement in a minute. So here's the back of the unit and interestingly the IEC connector has this cover plate here which you don't normally see. Normally all the connections are exposed on the back but this is trying to reduce the possibility of accidentally touching something on the main side so that's a nice touch. Uh, and then as I said the earth pin of the IEC connector goes to this four millimeter banana jack directly but also off to the mains PCB for those filter capacitors. Then we've got the DIN connector for the handpiece. Uh, obviously the high current connections are these thick wires but there's also one for the thermocouple going off to here. Looks like we've also got power which then goes to this uh, series digital isolator. I'm not sure if this is a genuine analog devices one but it seems to have the same specs as the ADUM1280. So isolation between the electronics in here and the USB serial converter which is connected to the USB port so that's a nice touch as well. So as you can see they seem to have taken quite a bit of care over the design of this unit. It seems to be pretty well built and certainly I wouldn't have any worries about the safety of this unit as I might do with some of the other devices we've looked at in the past. Right so the unit's plugged in. Let's measure the output from the secondary and that is just a little over 20 volts, 21.7 volts. Uh, the transformer itself says 230 volts AC input uh, at STG Electronics Towers. We tend to have a little bit more like 242 volts. So uh, a little bit higher voltage on the secondary than nominal because we've got a slightly higher mains input voltage. Uh, but if we measure the output, yeah, we've got a regulated 12 volt DC. So this looks to be a book regulator. Synchronous because we've got the two MOSFETs here. So it should have very high efficiency and uh, not many losses in this particular design.
Right, let's turn the unit on and have a look at the user interface. I've not got the iron plugged in at the moment, but it should still boot up. And yeah, it's detected no iron. Uh, interestingly, the O appears to have been drawn slightly weird. That's a shame. Uh, but you can see we've got the presets 330, 360 and 400 on there. And we press this button here to go to the menu. So the first menu item is the sleep temperature. That's at 100 degrees C. Now that sounds quite low, but the C210 and the 115 cartridges are so small, they've got very little thermal mass, so they heat up extremely quickly. So we can afford to set this lower. Normally you'd often see that up near 200, maybe a bit higher. But because the cartridges heat up so rapidly, we can afford to set it a bit lower and allow the cartridges to last a bit longer. Um, now we've got the amount of time before it goes into full standby mode so when it's detected the hand piece is in the cradle for 30 minutes at the moment then it will go into a standby mode and turn off the iron altogether. Then we've got the step temperature so this is how fine you want the adjustment on the temperature setting and 5 degrees C is quite a reasonable suggestion there. Then we've got the buzzer sound now the buzzer is actually not one of the annoying squeaky beepers this one's actually quite palatable so we could probably leave that enabled. The unit switch, so between degrees C and degrees F. Um, then we've got the calibration constant, so we'll put it on the calibrator. If we need to adjust the temperature up and down, we can do so with this menu item. Language, it's either English or Chinese. System info, so model C211 version 1.05. Uh, and then it's got uh, a few details. It's even got the output voltage from the DC to DC converter as 12.436 millivolts. I'm not sure why there's a little bit of weirdness going on with some of these fonts. I don't know how much of this is a font that's written in and how much of it is like a an image because the you've got the SDE but then the X is dropped a little bit lower and all of this stuff is a couple of pixels lower. It's almost like that's an image rather than some text that it's rendered. Uh, we've got a factory reset and then we've got exit so we can go that and go back to the main screen. So let's plug in the handpiece and see how quickly it heats up. And there we go, quite a nice clear display actually. We've got the port, it's detected it's a C210 handle. Apparently it can automatically detect between a C210 and the 115. It says it's in sleep mode and we've got the power which is presumably coming from uh, that current sense chip inside. So rather than a predicted sort of PWM value, this is actually the amount of power being delivered to the handpiece. We'll take it out. And there we go, rapid already up to 330. Let's see if that's accurate. And we are about 17 degrees off. So let's adjust that. And just a slight adjustment more and I think we've pretty much got it there. Uh, let me just put the tip on a wet sponge and we can see if the temperature drops and what the power level does. So that is displaying the real temperature as you can see it's dropping down you can see it's putting maximum power into the cartridge. So although there might be a little bit of cheating right around the set point it looks like it is trying to display the real value of the cartridge there. In terms of the presets they work a little bit different to what I was expecting. I think normally what happens is uh, you would pick your preset temperature but if you want to adjust the temperature then it freely allows you to do that. But at the moment you can see we're on channel 2 as the preset 370. If we adjust the temperature then it seems to in real time adjust the temperature of that preset and if we go to this one for example and then start changing the temperature it's storing that new temperature as the one on the preset and if we do a power cycle then yeah, those are actually stored in the EEPROM. So uh, I'm not sure I like that necessarily. I'd prefer to have how it would normally happen where you push and hold the button to store it as a preset, but if you vary the temperature from one of the presets, it just doesn't select them. Um, that's probably my only criticism of the user interface because everything else is really nice and clear and seems to work really well. So let's do a little bit of soldering and we'll just quickly have a look to see how much power we actually get into a PCB. Now these are relatively low power cartridges so it's not going to compare to the more powerful stations but it's an interesting data point.
Here's the data collected from my test PCB, which measures how much thermal power is delivered into that board. Bear in mind the C210 cartridges aren't really designed for delivering tons of power, so it's a little bit of an unfair comparison. Also, interestingly, the mechanic station does seem to inject a bit of noise onto that PCB, possibly because of the switch mode converter in there, but you'll notice it's a little bit noisy around here compared to the Metcal. But uh, as you can see, we're delivering tons more power with the 40 watt Metcal unit compared to this mechanic system that technically is able to deliver uh, 80 or 90 watts into a cartridge, but I think it's just literally these cartridges don't have the geometry to deliver that much power into a PCB. They're very small. I tested with the blade cartridge that came with the mechanic system, that's that light blue, and the darker blue is a genuine JVC cartridge with a 1.2 millimeter tip on it. Uh, but yeah, obviously a lot less power being delivered into that board. So that's the Mechanic C211, and if you're after a soldering station that takes JBC cartridges, either in the C115 or the C210 type format, then probably this is the best one that we've looked at so far. It seems to be really well made. I've got absolutely no complaints about the build quality or the safety of this system, um, and at this price point, I think it's pretty much unbeaten. So I'd highly recommend this unit if you're looking for this type of system. I'll put a link to this item in the description down below. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you've got any thoughts or comments, don't forget to leave them in the comments section. But until next time, thanks for watching.